experts, novices, fans just furious today. So is it fair, Jamel, to compare the NBA and the WNBA? Just look at the television rights. The NBA makes $2.7 billion a year, while the WNBA so far only makes $60 million a year. And this is a business that dictates pay. Uh, no, it is totally unfair uh, because I think the people, by the way, welcome people who are just now tuning into this conversation <laughs> about pay disparity, which by the way, the women in this league have been having for years now. What's going on, y'all? This is a movie that you don't want to miss. Roll a clip. God is commissioning you to do what he called you to do. It is time for you to suit up and boot up and step into your calling because this is your kingdom calling right now. You don't have time to sit around on your hands. Jesus is coming again. Let your light so therefore shine before men. There's a reason why you got this far because you're going all the way into the promise of what God has for you. Pastor Greg Locke, who's my friend, and Pastor Mike Signorelli, who's another incredible pastor, they combined both of their top-performing, top-selling movies and put them together to give a God-filled, spirit-filled presentation for you. You don't want to miss it. There's going to be prophecy in the, in the video. There's going to be all kinds of God-filled stuff. I'm going to tell you how to go get it. It's in movie theaters. Uh, one night only, April the 23rd, which happens to be one day after my birthday. So you do not want to miss it. Go to fathomevents.com. That's fathomevents.com and get your ticket today, April the 23rd. You got to see this movie. Um, I want to start the show by talking about Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. <laughs> now, she's an amazing player. She did an amazing job in college. She should get credit for everything and all the accolades that we see coming her way. It, it, it is a no brainer. Caitlin Clark will go on to make the WNBA a better place. I should get her a hat that says make the WNBA great again. She is going to do great things, but we have to compartmentalize salary endorsements and financial gain as a woman playing basketball. Donald, not Donald Trump, but um, Joe Biden, who is the worst president in United States history. I don't even know if he knows left from right, up from down his elbow from his, you know what? Some of y'all from the South know the, know the reference. I don't think he know what's going on. On his ex, he put and made reference to and wanted to give a shout out to and promote the difference between the earnings of an NBA player and a WNBA player. Let me set the record straight for everybody who's confused. The WNBA is nowhere near as popular. Nobody's watching it. It's not as entertaining as the NBA. They do not bring in the amount of money, viewership, uh, sales, product sales, you name it, that the NBA is bringing in. Let me just say this real quick. Nobody's watching women's basketball in comparison to male basketball. Why, Brandon? Is it because the misogynists are protesting women's basketball? No, because it's not as entertaining. We High school basketball, male, men's high school basketball is more entertaining than the WNBA. Why? Because they can dunk. You know, the, the basketball, a big component of basketball and the biggest excitement in basketball is dunking. When you dunk on people, when Shaq was bodying people in the paint, that was incredibly, I would argue, entertaining. Good to watch. Vince Carter dunking over Yao Ming. I mean, you know how crazy entertaining it is? The NBA dunk contest, all of these things that the males do in the excitement of the male game is the reason why they get paid more. They bring in more money. The WNBA is subsidized by the NBA. The WNBA, last time I checked, was not even profitable. So they cannot afford to pay Caitlin Clark some enormous amount just because they feel like it, just because they like her. They can't do it. Caitlin Clark has an earning potential in the WNBA. Her starting base salary is a starting point. And to be honest, if anybody does any homework, you know for a fact the NIL deal that she had, deals that she had, and also the endorsements that she will get is where she's going to make a lot of money. Joe Biden wrote on X complaining about the disparity in earnings between male and female or men and women you know, the best way to say it is men and women, and he's being disingenuous. 
these people on the left, these Democrats are pushing an agenda that's not rooted in facts and reality. They are just virtue signaling. They're trying to do their best with abortion and wage gap and all this other stuff to turn out female voters to vote for them. And I'll get to that in a minute. But the truth of the matter is that Caitlin Clark, if anybody looks it up, potentially just signed an eight figure deal with Nike. Now she signed an eight figure deal with Nike and eight figures is more than a million, $20 million. Potentially she's just signed with Nike. Do you know that'll make her the top 1% of 1% earners in America? She, if she made 20 million off of that one deal, she is one of the highest paid people in America. She is getting paid more than 99.9% .9 of men in America. Come on. I wish that we could get to a point where politicians would stop playing politics and think of ways to be genuine and unite us. And the reason that they're doing this, and I alluded to it just a second ago, they need the female vote. I just looked at a poll. I don't, I forget where the poll was, was from. I just remember seeing it where it shows that like 57% or so of women are endorsing or voting for Biden versus 37% of women are voting for Donald Trump. They are trying to capture demographics of votes anywhere they can. They're losing black men. And what they're losing in black men, they're trying to capture in black women. They're losing conservative white men, which is their biggest, which is the biggest voting block. Therefore, they need to make up for it with getting uh, liberal white women. Why do you say that, Mr. Tatum? I, I read this scripture on the last time I was on the radio about how women should be quiet in the church. And, you know, a lot of people get upset about that. And you can have a theological debate whether or not that's literal or figurative or whether or not that's the issues of one church or that's the issue that was being propagated across the, the nation at the time. It should be uh, used for today. That's up to you to argue that. But in the scripture... It goes on to say that Adam was made first and Eve was made for Adam. And it talks about how Adam or Eve was the one who was deceived. If you look at the Adam and Eve story, I want you to put this in your mind. And this is why it is important to compartmentalize these things today. You look at the Adam and Eve story. God made Adam first. God made Eve for Adam. Eve gets called away by herself with the devil and gets tricked. The devil knew he could not trick Adam. He knew that if he isolated Eve, he could trick Eve alone through emotionalism. You should not surely die. The emotion of feeling like I'm going to die and lose it all. And he's tricking her to think emotionally, not think about, about what God said literally and logically. But he tried to get her on emotion on an emotional bend. And what did she do? She ate the forbidden fruit from the tree of life. And I'll tell you this. And, and so the, so the women don't get too mad at me. It wasn't until Adam followed up and was a, was a manipulated by his own woman to also eat from the forbidden tree. But I will say this. This is the way that the enemy is using and abusing and manipulating women in politics today. The enemy is trying to isolate women on certain topics. Women have a, a sense of emotional connection with the abortion topic that men may not have. And so they isolate women over in this corner. And they sell you a dream, women's reproductive care, the life of the mother, rape and incest, which is less than 1% of all abortions that are occurring, but they get women emotional on that. They're going to take away your right. Women are going to do co-hanger abortions. They're trying to take away your rights. Women fought for your right. They're trying to take away your rights. And they're doing all this to get women emotional enough to vote for them. And it's working. If you isolate the male and female vote, women will make this country a communist country. If you isolate the, the minority vote, minorities will make this a communist country. If it wasn't for straight, Christian, conservative, white men, we would not have a country. And I'm just keeping it 100. And, and, and I'm not trying to berate women because every woman that's listening to this, you're perfect. You're going straight to heaven. I'm talking about the woman down the street, the other radio station. I wish that we would compartmentalize and understand the tactic of the enemy. This is why Joe Biden is saying on his Instagram about the women pay gap. He knows it's not true. We, we know that women choose different jobs than men do. You would never in your life see a protest of a woman down at the construction site saying we need DEI in the construction site. We need equal representation on the construction site, the oil rig, truck driving, cleaning toilets, uh, uh, picking up trash. You will never in your life see a protest where women would be advocating that they have equal representation in manual labor. It'll never happen. And so we know that the wage gap is a myth. Women are choosing to work jobs that 
happen to pay less. Women are working less hours than men are. It's common sense. Joe Biden knows this. He could take 30 seconds to have somebody research it for him. But the trick of the enemy is to get women emotional. And when they get emotional, they'll vote for you. And when they vote for you, you can push communism, socialism, and you can ruin this country. It's really that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, welcome back to the Austin Tatum Show. Uh, my producer gave me some good information here when it comes to uh, the Caitlin Clark situation. I got a few people that have called in. And I'll go to the callers here in a second. It says... Uh, the article reads uh, that Clark's NCAA popularity would do little, do little to impact her rookie salary given the current financial reality of the WNBA. The WNBA currently makes $60 million a season from its TV contract, ESPN, CBS, um, ION, and Amazon per front office sports. The NBA makes seven, uh, $2.7 billion. Think about this for a minute. I guarantee you, I haven't looked at any stats. I haven't did any numbers. Same thing happened in soccer. I guarantee you that the women probably make more of a percentage of the earnings from the NBA, uh, the WNBA, than men make from the percentage of earnings with the NBA. I guarantee you. I bet you a million dollars is disproportionate where women are making more of a profit share than men are. And it takes two seconds to understand this and diagnose this. Let me continue to read. WNBA makes $60 million a season. NBA make $2.7 billion. Uh, annually from its TV contracts with Turner and ESPN. Also, the NBA players get 50% of revenue from broadcast rights and ticket sales per the deal with the union. WNBA players only get 50% of the league's ex excess money after it hits a certain value target. It says, however, Caitlin Clark can make up to an additional $250,000 through WNBA players' marketing agreement, and she can also sign a team-specific uh, agreement for up to $100,000, according to the Indianapolis Star. There is also a $500,000 WNBA playoff pool and a $500,000 bonus split between the two uh, Commissioner's Cup participants. Plus, Caitlin will score millions in endorsement cash. So all of this talk of $70,000, $70,000 a year, duh, duh, that's more than the average household income. So she's making a lot of money to dribble the basketball and she can't even dunk. I just watched two clips in the NBA. <clears throat> That made me realize this is why women don't get paid what the men get paid. I think the dude's name is Luca. I don't watch basketball. But the big old sip, seven foot five dude <clears throat> that can probably run the point if he had to, stole the ball from a point guard. He's falling on the ground. He throws the ball over his head behind his back. He, he throw it to Kyrie. Kyrie's dribbling like he's going to do a layup. Kyrie throws the ball behind him over the defender, and somebody come from, I, I don't know, the third heaven, get the ball and dunk on everybody. The crowd goes crazy. <clears throat> People are screaming. You will never see a play like that in the WNBA. And when you do, I'll go to one of them games. How tall is Luka? Oh, he's 6'5". He just look big. Maybe his salary is big. Maybe that's why he looks so tall. Anyway, I got two people calling in. 844-900-7243. 844-900-7243. David from Akron, Ohio. Welcome to the Officer Tatum Show. Thank you, Officer Tatum. The, the WNBA is awful. They can't dribble. They can't shoot. They can't dunk. They can't play defense. What they can do is Republican things like cook, clean, have <laughs> children, be barefoot in the kitchen. It's like Charlie Kirk always talks about. Don't have a career. Don't play professional sports. Just shut your mouth, get in the kitchen, cook, and have children. Isn't that the Republican way? Well, David, that's, I don't think that's exactly the Republican way. Um, Charlie it, Kirk. It seems Kirk. like, it seems like you're, being, you're being superfluous. Are you joking or you seriously think that's the Republican way for women to, to just be in the kitchen barefoot cooking and cleaning? That's what Charlie Kirk says, and people like Charlie Kirk. And like Mike Williams, look at his wife and, and his family life. They're at home, barefoot, having kids behind the scenes, let alone playing basketball, please cook, clean, shut your mouth, and stay at home. That's what a good Republican woman does. <laughs> All right, thank you for your call. Let me let me just explain this. I don't cut people off when I know they're trolling. If that's a good Republican wife, you know, when you think about it, do you think Melania is sitting at home with a barefoot cooking and cleaning? No, she's not. You look at the people who are surrounding Donald Trump. There's a lot of women that are very successful, that are working, that are making a difference. Margot, who's, 
you can see her all over social media. They write articles about her. She actually looked like Melania. Do you think Margot is sitting there in the kitchen cooking and cleaning barefoot? What about Laura Trump? What about Laura Trump? Laura Trump ain't sitting in the kitchen with her feet up cooking and cleaning. Look at all the Republican politicians. You think Marjorie Taylor Greene is sitting in the kitchen cooking and whipping? And Nikki Haley, I don't even like her, but look at Nikki Haley. You think Nikki Haley's sitting in the, cook, the kitchen cooking and cleaning? Nikki Haley was a U.N. ambassador. Nikki Haley was the governor. Look at all the Republican governors around the country. You think uh, Carrie Lake is sitting and cooking and cleaning? Since this is the Republican way, what about all the Republican women that are doing all these amazing things in Congress in the sort? So it's cute to make the slot comment, but that's not true. Charlie Kirk does advocate for women to be mindful of their career choices. Now, it's not a Charlie Kirk theology. It's a biblical theology. And people that don't believe in God and that people that are, are considered to be beta males, like the gentleman that called in, he's beta. He's he's a little his his wrist is a little limp. He don't have a he don't have a fortitude to stand on any real principles. But the Bible said that he, that Adam was first, Eve was made for Adam. That's what the Bible say. Christ is the head of the church, the man is the head of the household. There's structure to this stuff. Women, serve your husband. Men, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Christ died for the church. There's a mutual respect level. There's a mutual um, I would say quality level, meaning that both people are equal in quality, but there's a structure to it. And there's nothing wrong with women staying at home and taking care of the kids. Ask a woman who's at home. Uh, no, how about this? I should have my wife call in. Ask my wife how she feel about being a stay at home mom. She don't have to work and slave over no job like she used to. She don't have nobody telling her what to do. You know what my wife is doing right now? She's probably on a stroll through the beautiful neighborhood in 70 degree weather, getting a workout on, pushing bow in a, in, in a, uh, in a stroller. You know what she's going to do later? Whatever she want to do. <laughs> you know what she get to do instead of slaving over a job? And I'm not trying to bash any woman who works for a living. I'm saying the people who are trying to shame women who stay at home. You know what else she's, she's going to do later? Whatever she want to do. She's probably going to hang out with Bo and play and roll around and watch him flip on the bed, watching him grow up, feeding him, changing his diapers, educating him, loving him. You know what happens in the middle of the day when he naps? He naps on mommy. You know what happens at night when he goes to bed? He sleeps in the bed with mommy and daddy. You know, in the morning, you know, people ask him, when will your kid have a bedtime? He don't have a bedtime because he don't have to get up and go to work in the morning. And neither do my wife. If my wife decides to sleep in one day because she's tired, you know what she's doing? She's sleeping in. You think my wife is complaining right now? And it's crazy because people try to make it make it shameful for women to be at home. It's honorable.